If you break one of these things, or if you just throw them out, you're releasing mercury into the environment. Mercury is toxic. Mercury is very bad for you. We've been working generations to get mercury out of uh, the industrial system, out of cars, out of um, different processes that we used to have. I mean, it, can it can turn you mad, the Mad Hatter. That's a result of mercuries. Hmm. That was from yesterday's show. Welcome back to the arena. I'm Michael Corrin. The, the plot thickens, I suppose. Or is it getting darker? Or has someone turned the light off? Uh, sorry, the, the puns about the government's light bulb lunacy are really difficult to avoid. We did discuss it yesterday. It's made a lot of uh, press in the past few days. And now here is Paige McPherson to uh, enlighten us more. I, I think why there is so much interest is because everyone has contact, obviously, with light bulbs. They have to light their house. Mm -hmm. And they now realize how incredibly dangerous these things are. Well, definitely. So uh, the average fluorescent light bulb containing about five milligrams of mercury, which of course we know, and of mm. course, as you and Brian discussed, is absolutely a toxic substance. Yeah. And really, this is all the result of the federal government initially banning the other kind of normal light bulbs that we were used which to had for no so long. At all. No mercury. Okay. Uh, and fluorescent light bulbs were the uh, energy efficient, greener alternative. Well, now we're learning that I guess it's not so green because uh, not only do they contain mercury, but there's no real way for us uh, to dispose of them conveniently. So now what the Ontario government then is doing is suggesting perhaps another ban then to make up for that uh, that patchwork ban from before. We're going to contemplate banning fluorescent light bulbs from garbage dumps where now we're learning that the mercury could very well be leaking into the groundwater. Not a good situation. And how do we do that? Well, that's the big question. I mean, when it comes to these garbage bans, you have to wonder how just how intrusive the government is going to get. Are they going to make sure that there are bureaucrats hired to search through our garbage? We've learned now that it indeed takes a lot of bureaucrats to uh, screw in a light bulb, but to actually inspect our garbage, but, but who knows? Seriously, though, a large garbage bin, that's about, what, three, four feet high, mm -hmm. three and a half to four feet high, quite wide. No one is going to be able to go down to the bottom to make sure there's not a light bulb. People also accidentally will just throw things away. It is inevitable through through malice, indifference or accident that a lot of these light bulbs will go into communal garbage dumps. Well, that's true. And the, the reality is that people, you know, they don't have a lot of time on their hands nowadays. Yeah. People are working a lot. We don't have the time to worry about, you know, putting every specific thing in every specific container. Are we going to have a specific garbage container for every substance in our lives? Mm. But yet the government does provide the information and I can tell you it's actually quite complicated how to actually effectively recycle these bulbs. I have it right here Michael it's five pages long I printed it directly from the Government of Canada website uh, on how these bulbs are bad for you. Oh there's pictures oh yeah uh, but it's mostly uh, it's mostly just about how it's, it's actually quite toxic to have mercury bulbs in your uh, in your home and if it spills on your carpet God forbid that your baby crawl around after. Look even if you never break one of these things mm -hmm. which is possible, though unlikely, when you dispose of them, they are a problem. How long have they been around now? Two years? Uh, so uh, in terms of the actual ban being in place, it No, they're the actual light bulbs themselves. The actual light bulbs themselves. I don't know how long they've actually been I mean, in the picture. It's not that long. But no, they're a new invention and the ban was Relatively. put in place in 2014, the original right. ban on the, the actual other light bulb alternatives. So in terms of actually being in people in Ontario's yeah. homes, I would say uh, since the, the start of 2014 is when they yeah, started I'm trying to, to think become about the big house. I mean, they were around and suddenly the others were impossible to get and the ones right. you'd stockpiled, they, they, they all disappeared. So, so now we've had a good year of people People, millions of people mm -hmm. dumping these things uh, in a way they thought was entirely legal and acceptable mm -hmm. and they're now in communal garbage dumps with all of that mercury so so even now huge amounts of damage have been done I don't believe in conspiracy theories I mean surely the people who came up with these thought it was for the best did they not realize oh there's some mercury here they probably will be broken because they're made of glass they must have known that yeah well that's precisely the problem I mean I do think that well first of all they the original federal government ban put in place in the name of being green mm. in the name of being environmentally friendly then we got to take into consideration okay there's mercury in them but there was no uh, convenient way put in place for Ontarians to get rid of these bulbs so I think that it it, it really is a case of governments 
you know, trying, aiming to do so much more than they the have the capacity for. I mean, the, the people for. who came up with Well, these. sure. I mean, and there are programs in place. You can go to your Canadian Tire or a store like that near your house and you can uh, have their safe disposal mm. spots No, I mean, there. the people who invented the things yeah. in the first place, they, they invented them, they came up with the idea because they wanted to save the environment. Right. They surely care that there was mercury inside these devices and it, it has to go somewhere. Even, even if you store them safely, if you dispose safely, at some point that mercury has to be dealt with. Right, that's true. And so it, it does need to be dealt with like hazardous waste. And that's why, you know, you can take them to stores to, to recycle them or, or things like that. But people don't know this because not everybody has the time to read through this five-page document that is accessed through the website uh, of the government and, and learn that they can't just throw out a light bulb. And if one breaks in their home, oh my gosh, now we've got a toxic substance on our hands. In fact, if it explodes on your carpet or something, you basically have to get the carpet out of the house as fast as you can, and the next time you bring it back in and you vacuum it, you better have the room sealed off and the windows open. How do you rip up fitted the, carpet, for goodness uh, Well, that's sake. the question. I mean, it's, it's quite complicated, and I do think that a lot of these policies that are put in place uh, in the name of environmental friendliness are... Um, well, they're really inconvenient for humans. They often don't think of the human cost involved. But I, I do think that this really is a case of, you know, one ban coming in place, uh, one ban, and, and governments not really thinking about what the consequence would be and now trying to sort of solve that problem with another ban, which really uh, is impractical, as I, we've discussed, I think this and is won't most solve severe. the problem. I mean, most people would probably agree recycling. I mean, it's not such a big deal. I mean, oh, they, sure. you know, we, we can compromise here. This, though, this is quite incredible. At any number of levels, both those who developed the idea of this light bulb, the government which said it's a good idea, and, then, and, it, and not just on the left, it was Republicans and Conservatives also who were part of this, mm -hmm. who went along with the ban. The removal of the alternatives, it's very hard to find those light bulbs now. I mean, they're mm -hmm. virtually it's almost impossible. So many people on, on so many levels of government and administration and science really got this so terribly wrong. I mean, we are not exaggerating here. If one of these smashes on the floor in your house, particularly if there are children around, you, you better do this properly. And if you if you use a broom, the brooms have to be thrown away. That that's how bad this is. That's right. Don't vacuum whatever you do because that'll spread it everywhere. I, I, I mean, I've, I've never been speechless in my life, but I have few words here because this really is a case, whatever your politics, of government getting it fundamentally, profoundly wrong. Oh, absolutely. No, make no mistake about whether this is a left-right issue. This, the Conservative government brought in the original ban that made these fluorescent light bulbs really the main uh, right. option here. Now, uh, with the banning of... Uh, potentially throwing them into garbage dumps, and that's the, the provincial liberal government, mm. so, you know, both sides of the issue are on board here. What effectively is going to happen as well is that, you know, another issue with these, they're quite expensive. Perhaps yep. now LED bulbs are going to be the only All ones right. that people can afford in Ontario. Candles, candles. <laughs> Let's go back to the 14th century. It's the only way. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you.